In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer awesome fitness questions awesome. asked by listeners like you. We also talk about current events. We talk about our lives. We mention our sponsors. We have a lot of fun in this episode. We and always do. The introductory portion was 40 minutes long. Uh, that's where we talked about those things. And then after that, we got on the questions. Here's how the episode went. We start out by talking about hydrogen cyanide. That's yeah. the stuff that'll kill you. Uh, but a great new supplement. A company convinced uh, influencers to sell it as a joke, and they did. Uh, that just shows you, you how idiots. Yeah, exactly. Then we talked about influencing the uninterested. Uh, the one of the number one goals of fitness evangelization is to reach the people that are not interested hmm. in fitness. We talk about how we do that. Can we get Gary in the gym? Then I talked about the annoying effects of orange or red blue blocking glasses. You know, you put these on, they block blue light, uh, but it makes everything look weird. Um, but not Felix Ray blue blocking glasses. These glasses don't change the color of the world around you, and they still block blue light. That's why we work with them. They don't look, look nice. like a dork. Uh, look, we have a hookup for you. Go to Felix Gray Glasses. That's F E L I X. Gray is spelled G-R-A-Y, glasses.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get free shipping and free returns. Then we talked about Christmas shopping. Justin brought up the stocking stuffers. I totally forgot to get stocking stuffers. Now yeah, I'm yeah, you're welcome. Freaking out. Adam talked about how he's giving Magic Spoon high protein, amazing macro content cereal to his friends and family. Now, this is a company that we work with. They make cereal that is like harks back to children's cereal so like like kind of like fruit loops and cinnamon toast crunch or whatever anyway the flavors are amazing the ingredients are even better uh, a serving can be anywhere between 20 to almost 40 grams of protein of high quality uh, dairy protein and that's not even including the milk but we do have a hookup for you go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump you'll get an automatic discount to your product then Justin talked about Star Wars. He went to the premiere of Star Wars yesterday. Don't worry, no spoilers. Uh, he just talked about how excited I he was. I wouldn't do that to you guys. Don't then, worry. then we talked about the impeachment that's going on and how politics is quite entertaining when you forget how dangerous politicians are. I talked about studies on a synthesized version of curcumin and how it reversed Alzheimer's in rats. And then I brought up exercises effects on the brain. Then we got into the questions. The first question was, how do I rid get rid of bottom belly pooch? This is where the lower part of your abs kind of stick out a little bit, maybe some excess body fat there. So we talk about strategies. The next question, this person wants to know if men and women should work out differently. Like, are there differences to, with men and women in terms of how they should use resistance training? The third question was, uh, this person wants to know what our opinion was on the following. Food is medicine. That's an old quote. I believe Hippocrates said that first. So we talk about that. And then the last question, this person's a brand new parent and a personal trainer and wanted to know if we had any advice on how to stay consistent with fitness during these difficult, <laughs> stressful times. Best of luck. Also, this month, uh, of course, all month, MAPS Aesthetic, one of our most popular workout programs, has been 50% off. As of the time we air this episode, there's only five days left. So you have five days to take advantage of this 50% off sale. That's a massive discount. And this program is extremely effective. First off, it's all detailed and planned out for you. But then there's a component that allows you to inject body parts that you would like to focus especially on. So if you're saying, hey, look, I want to work out my whole body, but I really want to make a special emphasis to train my glutes, or I really want to work on my back or my shoulders, there's a component in MAPS Aesthetic that allows you to do that. You put that in your focus sessions. By the way, focus sessions can only be found in MAPS Aesthetic. So here's how you get the 50% off. Go to mapsblack.com and use the code BLACK50, B-L-A-C-K-5-0, no space, for the discount. Did you guys watch that that BBC thing that I sent over to you about the, the influencers promoting cyanide? Every that time I hear, by the way, hilarious. before we get into that, every time I hear BBC, what does it remind you of? The television show? BBC, BBC, yeah. East the, Coast Family. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's just immediately. What was that hip hop yeah. song in the yeah. 90s? Boys to Men, dude. Yeah, that's it. ABC, BBC. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> East anyway, Coast Family. I did Either watch that it. that or your porn search. I did. Too. Stop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Justin I went there. had to do that. I went wow, there. Too far. I, yeah. I, um, I did see it. And so what it is basically is they took t influencers with half a million to, a mil to two million followers. Yeah. Brought them in. 
and had them all audition to sell a new product. Right. That the main ingredient is it's clearly labeled cyanide, hydrogen cyanide. <laughs> like what they used to kill people and, with in World War uh, One, right? And these idiots are just like, yes, it's the greatest thing for fat loss. It totally works and it's great. And I'm like, oh my god. I, uh, you, do you? I'm, is it? Is this going to come to a screeching halt at one point? Like the, it's getting out of control. Like the influencers that just promote whatever. Like half of them don't use it, half of, and that that was what that was highlighting was yeah. that it's getting to a point now where they're already uh, losing their power. Right, I, I, I feel the same way too. Like when I when I well, all the pages that I follow that have big big followings like that, the engagement that they're getting, and yeah. especially when they post like something that's a, an ad, you see like no comments, nothing on it whatsoever. It's like I can't imagine that's doing that well for the companies. No, I don't think, There's and that's no why way. that's why it's that's why they're losing money. They're losing money because companies are working with them and realizing this is a waste of money. Very few of them really have power and influence, and a lot of them are bullshit artists. You know what I mean? They'll do anything for a dollar. You tell them to sell anything, yeah. and you pay them, and they're going to sell cyanide, <laughs> which highlights two things, by the way. It highlights oh, two things. so disturbing. Highlights, thing number one is that they will do anything for a dollar, and thing number two, that they're idiots. Who doesn't yeah. know that cyanide is poison? <laughs> like you don't even read. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Cyanide, hydrogen yeah. cyanide, that sounds... Tasty. Sounds like chemicals. That sounds... Yeah, that's yeah. science. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They made it in a lab. Idiots. Well, and that's an that's an extreme, right? So that's the that's one end of the spectrum where it's like over-the-top ridiculous, and I know that... But there's, there's a lot of stuff even in the middle that I... And I try and tell kids that are trying to build their social following so that they can become quote unquote influencers. And you, know, you got to be really careful of you, just because you start to get your first offers, which I think when you've been trying so hard to get a following and you've been hustling and, and, and taking all the great angles for the last you know year to two years and consistently posting and you start Hacking getting the some, system, right? You start getting some traction, right? Photos from all the angles. Right. Yeah. And, and then, and then companies start reaching out to you and of course, I, I bet you're you're really tempted to want to just start taking money right away because you've been working for the last year or whatever to get that mm -hmm. attention. But you don't realize how much that can backfire by just accepting some random company because these companies, especially supplement companies, they're really smart because uh, they're, they're the margins and they do like a commission based deal. So it's like it's it's win win, -win, -win for, yep. it's win win for them. If you if you're terrible, you don't influence a lot of people. You only sell five bottles, no skin off their back. They're paying you ten mm -hmm. or twenty percent commission. Mm -hmm. But then what does that look for you as a brand? One, if the product is crap or has things like cyanide and it can't be good, or it, what if if it just simply goes out of business. It's some small, small brand that's trying to take off and they don't go anywhere and now they're gone. Yeah, and, then, and you switch, if you, as you continue to switch partners and switch partners, yeah. it just makes you look fake. Yeah, I, It's, you know, look, if you're going to be an influencer in a subject, my advice is this, uh, know what you're talking about. Yeah. So actually be knowledgeable on your subject. You don't have to be an expert so long as you stay in your lane, you know what I'm saying? But be very educated. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Least. That's what I mean. So let's say you're in the fit, let's say you're a fitness influencer, but you you haven't trained a lot of people. You've only kind of trained yourself, and you know you, you know some stuff, but not a lot. That's okay, so long as you stay in your lane. If you stay in your lane, you're fine. In fact, you'll probably be more effective that way. Yeah. It's when they don't. Is when they move out of their lane and act like they're experts or super knowledgeable about subjects they're not, mm -hmm. um, that it hurts them. I mean, the consumer gets hurt, but you know what's happening is the consumers are getting a little wise to it. Yeah. And they're starting to see that these – and they're starting to get parody. That's how you know the end is coming, that the the influencer – influencer be, is becoming a bad word. It used to be a good word. You know what I mean? Like, I'm an influencer. Oh, that's cool. Now you're like, I'm an influencer. Like, oh. Yeah, I went from entrepreneur to influencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, What's the next er? Yeah, yeah. Influencer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. It bring, brings me to another uh, another point. I was thinking about this uh, yesterday, uh, last night. I was uh, doing some deep thinking. And I was thinking about how we could possibly influence the people that are considered unreachable. And really, you can break down, and when it comes to fitness and health, right, you could break down the population – into two different categories. It's the interested and the not inter the non-interested. Mm -hmm. Now the interested it doesn't mean that they're doing the right things, it doesn't mean that they're consistent, it doesn't but it, but what it does mean is they're seeking out information on trying to get in better shape, trying to improve their health, trying to burn body fat, you know, work work on their nutrition whatever. Those are the people that I see the fitness space uh, just constantly targeting. Is the people who are interested, and 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 that's easy. That's an easy target because you could yeah, sell them. Yeah, you could sell them with 
make them feel insecure. That's number one. What do they call it? Pain points. You know, mm-hmm. you're fat, you're ugly, mm-hmm. you're whatever. Um, you can sell them with motivation and inspiration. This is the day you're in control. You're in the driver's seat. You're make never going to do enough. Yeah, make a decision, right? That's the that's the message. And then what ends up happening is you end up, you know, these people end up get starting and stopping, starting and stopping, which is which is a big issue with them. So that's the interested. Then there's the non-interested. These are the people that are unreachable by the current, uh, you know, players in the fitness space. How do you reach the people that don't that don't even know or don't even really care to know or don't really think about improving their health and fitness, those are the people that make up the majority. The majority of people out there who are just going about their lives and don't realize, they truly don't realize the incredible life-changing benefits mm. that health and fitness can provide so to them. So what are the techniques that came to mind uh, when you're thinking about that? You got to bring them in without hammering them about fitness and health butt yeah. pics so <laughs> that's, a, that's part of it that's one way yeah, that's you know hey look at my butt by the way protein has <laughs> oh, four, also four yeah. calories per gram i wish you would go on like a kick like that for a while where you just do some like ironic posts like that oh, okay <laughs> yeah, i'm not gonna post a butt <laughs> like, pic yeah <laughs> like a real sexy oh, dressed up as chewbacca and then drop some heavy it would work science so right well. yeah exactly yeah, not <laughs> at all if we use anybody's butt you know it's helpies just, we'll go back to helpies justin's butt he's yeah. got the best one no, I, it's, it, you know, really it's, I think it's about um, being the example and then communicating to things that we tend to think are silly Yeah. in the fitness space. You know, the thing, stuff that we think is like, you know, uh, trivial. Well, it's, uh, you know, and part of that too is just, you got to calm down, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like the, the fitness community is so like obsessed and, and crazy, you know, like, it, like looking in from the outside, it just looks like, all right, dude, like get away from me. You know, like it's just too much, you know, like be relatable, you know, like, like don't just try and put yourself out there that you're, you're kicking so much ass, like 24 seven, you mm-hmm. know, like everything is so great because I've all of a sudden converted my entire life towards this. Do you, you know? do you guys remember the first time when your clients saw you like drink a beer yeah, or yeah. like have a burger yeah. and how powerful and impactful that was for your client? Because yeah. as a, as an early trainer, I thought to myself, if my cli- if a client sees me drinking a beer or eating a burger or a French fry, that's going to be terrible. I have to be perfect, especially in front of them. Then you know later on I realize like wait that's way less effective. What's more effective is to show them that I'm a real person just like they are. And the first time they saw me do that, you could see them open up more and be like, wow, this is somebody I could listen to. He understands me. Yeah. He's not just a you know a fitness zealot. And you, know you can saying? have fun with it, man. You know it's like. I could go work out and have a really fun workout and like that, that fuels me to go do other fun things. It's not that, you know, I'm going like, it's just so much punishment, like surrounding going to the gym and bettering yourself because you're so, so worthless, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, come on. Here, here's a great example of what I'm talking about. Okay. So we've been talking about on the show and it's starting to go mainstream a little bit and the fitness space it's been mainstream now for about a year or two is the, 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 the potential benefits of reducing uh, blue light exposure at night in terms of sleep quality, right? So, oh, that's like becoming trendy. Now. Yeah, it's becoming a thing now. Like, like studies are showing studies are showing that reducing just light exposure in general, but more specifically, blue light and also green light, um, reducing the exposure about an hour or two before bed increases melatonin production, improves sleep quality. It's got all these far-reaching potential health benefits. Um, now, here's what the, the health and fitness space does. They create glasses that are orange or dark red, okay? How many average people are you going to reach with orange or dark red glasses? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? About as many people as uh, showed up to the Star Wars uh, movie, just like me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. we've, we've, they Very already experimented with this. People. They tried it in the 80s. Yeah, <laughs> they that's like, right. Yeah, they tried Blue blocking black glasses yeah. were out in the 80s. Yeah. And you, if, if I show my parents and I'm like, hey, wear these at night. It helps with sleep or whatever. And my mom's going to put on these dark gray. Like, what? I'm not going to wear this. So, you know, that's why a company, because I, I was actually having this discussion with someone and they were trying to argue the effectiveness of the red amber glasses versus the more clear glasses. Like Felix Grey glasses don't really change the tint uh, of, of the world around you. They're trying to say, well, it's more effective if they're super dark. It's going to be, I'm like, you know, sure. I mean, so, so maybe. Would a, so would a blindfold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you want to be really effective yeah. and you walk around with a fucking You're blindfold. You're not doing on. it hard enough, yeah, bro. Exactly. Yeah. But who's, how many average people yeah. are going to use that? Yeah. Nobody is. Yeah. So then you got a company like Felix Grey. They're stylish. They don't change the color of everything around you, and they still do a good enough job where you're going to get really good effects. 
That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah, it how you works reach with the, your lifestyle. You're it, not like changing everything to conform to that. Totally. That's how you reach uh, the unreachable. Now, anyway. speaking of that, that was so. Uh, I actually did that for Christmas gifts. Have you guys done all your Christmas shopping yet? Yeah, yeah. I finally got finished all of it. The hardest part was like trying to find all the knickknack stuff, you know, for the uh, uh, like the stocking stuffers oh, and all shit, that. Shit, I didn't do that. Yeah, Thanks. I know. That's all like always the last minute stuff, and so that's easy though, isn't it? I mean, you you think Don't so, you? but it's just like it's, it's like, do lot. I really want to buy this? This is like junk stuff yeah. you know it's like like little mini toys and like i was gonna say do you guys do you guys have like so a lot of families have like different traditions of what they do inside inside the stocking like what's inside your kid's stocking what's inside your kid's stocking typically well typically it's it's just little knickknack stuff like yeah, what little, the fuck is that mean? I, exactly yep. what does that mean like little toy, toy things decks and like cards. little decks of cards and you know like uh uh like little art you know, packs of like things for them to sketch on or whatever, dude, like Rubik's cube yeah. or, you know, some bullshit. Yeah, They'll take it out and be like, wow, that's cool. Yeah, Never look at it. Our, throw it away. Ours was always candy and then gift cards. It was a bunch of different mm -hmm. candy, like uh, all, yeah. a random candy. And then it was gift cards to, you know, Barnes and Noble and, uh, you know, iTunes and just all yeah, your different. That's a good way to do it. That was kind of like what our, our uh, stocking used to be, at least at my best friend's house. Right. That's not a bad idea, well, actually. I think I'm going to buy a gift card for the movies for. Yeah, like, it was like that. Movies. Yeah. Like Because then my dog, because I take in the movies all the time, so it'll save mm -hmm. me money. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, actually <laughs> trying a new thing, like an experiment with, you know, one of our partners being uh, uh, Magic, Magic Spoon. I was like going to try and see how like some of the other kids and some, some of the other people on my other side of the family like, like it, you know? I'm just like, I'm going to kind of do that as their stocking stuffer to just test the waters. Put and a whole see big box like of cereal in the stocking. <laughs> yeah. Well, not like inside it, but like to the, uh, adjacent to it. Now, you know I mean? didn't do that for Christmas, but I did. So I actually, one, two, three, four, five. Five comes next. Five. Yeah. <laughs> stupid. I'm just trying to see if I did five. <laughs> five different family members. And who I, I sent it to my, my family members that don't listen to the podcast, you know, don't, you know, eat really, really healthy. To try and encourage them a, a healthier, healthier alternative. Here's some protein. Well, yeah, I mean, if they were, if they're feeding their kids cereal or like regular cereal, and they get a taste of this, it's a, a much better alternative mm -hmm. than that. Yeah. And I'm actually really curious and interested. Like, no doubt in my mind, we talked when we first talked about Magic Spoon. Like, we we were excited about it. It's amazing. We love it. Uh, I know all of my bodybuilder friends lo are going to love it. But I'm most interested in like my family and friends that, you know, yeah, they want to make better choices, but they're not making a real hard effort to it. Like a product like this, I see them. They'll get sold on the taste. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Well, I want to see that though. You know, like it, it is an experiment. Like at the end of the day, like, I don't know, like they, the, that side of the family too is a lot like what you're describing. Like they don't, they're not really that involved in fitness or like going to the gym and yeah not, i'm not getting them to wear blue blockers like that's no. too that's too big of a step right yeah, now it's yeah, like here's some yeah. cereal <laughs> yeah exactly cereal people like cereal right, right? they might right. think something's up though they might get be like look at him be like cereal yeah. wait a minute yeah. <laughs> you're tricking me they were smuggling, except they don't know how to read the label fitness except you know they don't know how to read the label so I, they'll look at him be like what i don't get it dude it's yeah. a, it blows my mind i mean 30 something grams in a in a, a a little bowl dude is a lot oh that's a that's a my god dude if for, for, especially for macro counters yeah if you're like a competitor Editor, yeah, and you're trying to get your protein in, and you're dealing with like hardcore restriction. I could see it become. A I, I, well, I had to school some goofball who made a comment on uh, the how expensive it was on the forum, and I'm like, when you do the math, okay, if you take yeah, pro protein is expensive, right? If you take yeah. protein bars or shakes and you break down what a bar per box costs you, you know, three to five dollars per bar because you're getting. 20 to 40 grams of protein in it. That's what you're paying. What they're for. doing is they're comparing shitty cereal to yeah, high like, protein. Like, yeah. no, like, absolutely no shit. It'd be yeah. like comparing <laughs> your protein powder to like Nestle Quick. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. I'm not going to buy this protein powder. I got this chocolate Nestle Quick over here. It's way cheaper. <laughs> and it tastes yeah. better. Yeah. 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 Defeats the oh, whole purpose. Whatever, bro. Right. Defeats the whole purpose. Right, right. Anyway, I was, I was, uh, I was a little worried yesterday. And then I, I was like, what? Justin yesterday on the, during the podcast was uh, poor kid. He was getting sick. Oh, sick! And he's I was, like, I was out. Of oh, it. guys, I got to go home. I don't feel good. Yeah, I left work early. Uh, Headache. He's terrible you know, energy. I apologize, you guys. Yeah, yeah, barely talking. And you know, it's like, God, what's wrong? Poor Justin. Fucking. I always check on him when I when I check on a story to see how he's feeling when I see that. Yeah. yeah so that's why I looked at the story. I'm like, poor. I want. I hope he's okay. And big old smiley, happy, energetic face at the like what what is it the nine o'clock showing of Star yeah, Wars? Because it's Star <laughs> Wars, dude. What, what do you want from me, like, dude? Bro, I, we're forty. We haven't grown out of line to get out of work. I, uh, I went home. I took a little nap. He's like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I need to go home early, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm all for Clint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Three hours later, fucking popcorn in his face watching fucking Star hey, Wars. Like, yeah, he's all flexing in the picture. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, here. It's, it's like, like it's like dude, the healthiest picture I've ever seen of him. Yeah. It's like game day. You know what I'm saying? It's all in your in your mind. Oh, here, exactly. I didn't have that. There, I had it. Yeah, so. well, how was it? How was the movie? Oh, my God. No was, spoilers, please. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, I, I, I definitely respect, you know, my fellow Star Wars. What games. are the critics saying? Are they, are they, you know, I read a bad review. It, oh well, you know, I read a review that said it was pointless, that it was all over the place. Well, you but know, I don't what? know. That guy is is just just hates life, you know. <laughs> so he's just an angry person who just is like wants to shit on anything that's good, yeah. you know. And that's what I'm starting to realize is like there's certain people that just are fixed, yeah, you know. And like so, in, just in terms negative. of the stories, yeah, they're just negative to begin with. And like I, I've talked to family members and you know friends that like are already have this preconceived idea that it's gonna suck so bad. And because of all this and the other, I'm like, yeah, well, it is because you came in there with that yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because yeah. you suck. Yeah, yeah, you suck. When you yeah. suck, maybe you turn sucks. that like right back on you. Well, I think that's it, right? It's people that come in that they want it to be a certain storyline or tell what they want, yeah. and then it doesn't play out. How well, frustrating and, is that? Well, it, well, here's the thing too. Like, I guess, like, I'm kind of guilty of that, but like, I was like looking at all the, you know, uh, you know, the theories and where they where it could go and all this stuff, and like, it fucking came through for me. You know, like everything I wanted to happen, like did. So I was like so happy. I loved it. Yeah, uh, can you I, share I some it. of that without spoiling? I don't want to be. Yeah, yeah. Like, who, who wins? Uh, it, who wins in the end? Let's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah dies? let's just say it. Yeah, everything worked out. No. Um, was this supposed to close the book, or is this opening it up for many well, other they, legs? Yeah. So I think that they're gonna they're gonna stop. You know, with that. Uh, that side of the story for, for and go on the other years. angles. Yeah, for, they're just gonna you know Mandalorian. They're gonna do these side you know storylines and this that and the other. But uh, in terms of this the Skywalker saga, like this was sort of the close out of that. Mm. But then they still left it an open ending to it. Uh, you know, at the end. So that's Sounds as much like spoiler as I could. <laughs> Could could describe, but they there was lots of introduction of old past characters and things that they right. brought in in That's a enough. really fucking cool way, and I just I appreciate it. That's, That's enough. All I gotta Don't say. ruin it because I can't wait to watch. But you're right about negative people. You reminded me of yeah, this, man. This one client I had that was the most negative person in the ever I've ever met in my entire life. She went on vacation to Italy. Okay, Italy. Italy is known for having the best food in the world. Everybody knows this. It's a fact. A scientific fact. She comes back and I'm like, oh my God, how was, how was the, your, your trip to Italy? She's like, eh, you know, the food was okay. I'm like, what? The food was okay. <laughs> she's like, yeah, you know, she's like, I, you know, I don't really, the ice cream wasn't that good and the, the food wasn't that good. She's like, I found a pizza hut and a McDonald's near the hotel. So that's where I ate most of the time. Oh my God. And I, yeah, I In remember. Italy? Yeah, dude. And I remember sitting there like, how do I not take this personally? I felt like it was an assault on my, <laughs> yeah. on my soul, you know? And then I realized, oh, she's just the darkest person in the world. There's no possible. <laughs> That's the only reason why yeah, she you, wasn't that excited. You just have like evil tar. Inside those are, the, those are like the complaints I told you we get on here. The, like I was talking about the other day at work. Cause you know, I'll be talking to Cassie and she'll tell me like, you know, oh, I have, she, cause she sends me any, any complaints I want to see. Right. And mm. she'll send it to me. And what we can see now with HubSpot is we can track everything that they've done. Right. So I can mm. see, oh, this person came in on this free blog that Sal wrote that took him five hours. Oh, and then they downloaded this free guide that he also wrote that took another four hours. And then, oh, they watched these YouTube videos that took us X amount of hours and our editing team cost us money to put, and then they did this, and then they get, here's the complaint. Yeah, this shit doesn't work. I don't know why. Why would I buy any of your guys' programs? Like somebody who's got all this free content is always the person that, <laughs> that bitches about uh, something and complains. It's never the person that's bought two or three things or uses the uh, stuff. It's somebody who's gone through all the free channels. It's the worst because you walk away from it and you're just like, oh, like it affects you, yeah. you know, and then you realize yeah. like, oh, that was them, not me. Yeah, yeah but it was great because I was at that movie, like I was there with amongst my people, you know what I mean? Like it was like were Courtney, Courtney was uncomfortable. Yeah. So we're, we're sitting there like me and, and Courtney and the boys and uh, we got there kind of early. And so uh, this guy shows up late by himself, you know, mind you, uh, he's in this like black robe. He like hood and everything over his face. He just like walks right past us, and I'm like, "Whoa!" It looked like the Grim Reaper. He like sits down and like I'm like, "Whoa!" You went all out. He's like, he starts eating his popcorn. He's like, "I'm really excited." <laughs> Whoa, <dude. laughs> 
<laughs> like, like turned to Courtney. I'm like, we gotta watch out for this guy. Wow. Yeah, but he was a fan. I bet he gets. He was a real fan. I bet he gets hella girls. That Dude. guy must be a. St- there was a guy in a Yoda mask yeah. like, towards the front. People were cheering. Just a, just a it was a fucking great theater full of virgins. You know. Yeah. <laughs> It totally you know what was. Uh, I was watching last night? Uh, so, and I'm, and I know I've, on the show I've talked about this before. I am not that out of the three of us. I'm the least uh, political. I, I don't care to watch this, but we are in a very. Uh, this is this is historical. I mean, uh, Trump is the third president ever to be impeached. Mm-hmm. So th- it's piqued my interest enough to start watching and reading more and just i'm curious like because again because it's oh uh, that sounds way more fun right it's historical so i'm i'm I'm, I'm interested in everything that's happening right now and so last night i caught myself watching uh i think it's the final uh democratic debates is it it the the final one of the year yeah and ironically right after trump gets impeached then i don't know what the i don't know what the fuck the democrats are doing because they literally uh are just all blasting each other yeah well that's because that's what they do uh, you're supposed to do that well i yeah i I get that right to a point but they're all doing it uh like comparing how each one is more like trump they're using like trump's name came up the entire time (laughs) of course right which i I feel like that's like rule number one you don't do that right you want to take the mind everyone's mind off that no no it's an effective strategy well what they end up doing is they all end up drawing parallels to how each one of the candidates are, are like him in an area, yeah. and then it just makes them all get lumped in the same category. Yeah, so, so, so it's like if you're trying to really draw a line and say you're he's this evil, awful person, then you I think you have to you should all stick to that narrative, and we we're all way different, right? But what ends up happening is they all get into these debates <laughs> on, yeah. and they start calling each other out on how they got fucking big money in their pockets, no, and you're they're more Trump than me. Man. Yeah, you're was, more Trump the whole than thing me. was like that. Yeah. I'm like now at the end of watching it, being somebody who like doesn't pay attention to this. All I looked at is like, Jesus, they're all the fucking, they're all the same. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? What, we're just going to get somebody, somebody else just like him in there based off of what these are. You guys are all pointing out. No, what you have to, what the thing about, you have to realize about um, dem- these, these debates where the Democrats are fighting over who gets the nomination to run against Trump mm-hmm. is that they are speaking to the strong Democrat base. So those who's watching that, who cares about that are Democrats, hardcore Democrats. So what they say in those debates is different than what they're going to say when they're debating and trying to sway voters. Trying to win, I, yeah, over. but I feel so like, it becomes. I, I feel like if you're because again, I'm I'm non biased coming into it. I'm just watching more for entertainment, and I'm and I'm trying to put myself in those shoes. I understand what it is. I understand who's probably watching this debate, but I feel like if I'm a if I'm if I normally vote Democrat and I'm watching this, I'm like. I don't know who to pick out of yeah. these assholes. No, well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I, I'm like, you know, and so I could easily be persuaded over to the other direction just simply based off of the where the economy is right now. And I'm like, well, you know, fuck, our tax return was better this year. Yeah. Uh, things are, a little, you know, as far as the stocks are going, I'm doing okay there. Well, you're, so. you're, you're, you're more independent, that's why. So it, you have, what you have to understand is for the base, Democrat base, Trump is literally Satan, right? They literally cannot stand him. They hate him. So what it's comparing other candidates to him is an effective way of shutting down your opponents. And they're fighting each other, which is what they're supposed to do. Yeah. They're fighting over the nomination. But it's, what's funny to me is when you look at these, these when, when you watch the Republican debates against each other fighting for the nomination of the Democrat debates where they're fighting for each other, you see more of the extremes. Like with the Democrats, it's who can give away more free stuff. Like, I'm going to give away this much free stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'm going to give away more free stuff. And I'm... With the Republicans, it's like, who's more American? I'm so American. I do this. I'm way more American than you are. Oh, yes. I believe in God way more than you do. <laughs> it's absolutely, uh, it's, oh, it's absolutely hilarious. But my opinion, and I, I consider myself independent, my opinion is that the Democrats are fucked. They have terrible candidates. Biden is their best option. Biden sucks. They have nobody. The economy's crushing. The imp- impeachment happened. And you know, do you hear what happened? They don't want to bring the yes, articles. They don't want to, they, they're not going to bring it because they know it's not going to get passed through the Senate, so they're trying to stall it. They're trying to stretch it out because they know it's it's a strategy to to attack his character, and they want that strategy to be around for the whole election. Now, they're saying it's because they want to wait and see what the you know how the Senate's going to approach the trial and all that stuff, but really they just want to stretch it out. And, and they know if they bring it to the Senate, they're going to lose because it's completely on party lines. This is how you know it's a partisan issue. He got impeached uh, almost 100% on the fact that it was all the Democrats that voted yes and almost every single Republican voter no. It's totally partisan. When it goes to the Senate, it's going to be the same thing. 
There's more Republicans in the Senate than there are Democrats. So there's, it's not going to go anywhere. But here's the thing. If they wait, stall it out, A, it's their Hail Mary attempt at you know cr- beating him because they know economy's crushing, our candidates are weak, we need this strategy. And number two, maybe what they're hoping for, if they can stall it long enough, is that the Senate loses enough Republican seats that when they, when they do have a majority in the Senate, then they'll bring it to the Senate knowing that they can actually make it happen because they'll think he'll win. So, oh, what, if he wins, we can stall this, but maybe we'll win enough seats in the Senate, then we'll bring it there. Mm. Then as soon as he wins, we'll kick him out, and then we'll, we'll start. So it is, if, it, it is a smart strategy, in my opinion, looking at what they're working with. I can't blame them for doing this, but here's the dual side of it. It could backfire bad. I think it already is. I I, I think the way everyone's rallying behind it is it, it just it smells fucking fishy. Oh, dude. It smells way too fishy. For anybody that has like half a brain that's paying attention to it, it's just like, oh, this is fucking And Pelosi looks have you seen her talk about like when she's being interviewed by reporters? Uh, yeah. She, yeah. I, it's, it's uncomfortable. I, I almost a couple times I'm watching her. She's having a stroke. And, oh no, she's just I know it's doesn't just know what's tripping over words. And, yeah, yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's rough. It's an interesting thing. It's really fun. Well, it's got. Me, it's actually got me. It actually has me watching and reading some stuff. So it, that's why I had to bring it up. I know uh, Doug cringes a little bit when we when we go down the political uh, rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. But I, I feel like this is. Yeah, we have to talk about this. You absolutely love and follow everything like crazy. It's even piqued my interest. I got to think that. A, a big portion of our listeners have to be paying attention or curious yeah. about it, and I'm paying attention to the Galactic Empire. And I, 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 do, I, I do like <laughs> same to, thing, by the way. I do I like know, to hear <laughs> your opinion on these things because I do know that you're independent. And I do know that you're 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 non biased with that. And uh, I mean, I I openly probably have leaned more conservative in the past, but I still I you know I don't the reason why I don't vote I don't know enough yeah you know, so I stay away from that stuff. But I'm finding myself paying attention more than I ever have Dude, because Trump, it's drawn like, into the circus. So yeah. after Trump got impeached, right? So this is a big event, third time in ever. After he got impeached, stock market hit record highs. And he, he I think he generated, I don't remember how many millions of dollars in campaign funds from, so he got impeached immediately. I don't know if you guys noticed ads in Facebook and Instagram. Mm. Immediately after the impeachment went through, there were ads with Trump, support me in fighting this witch hunt or whatever. So he's spinning it to oh, generate. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know I meant to. I meant to tell you too that uh, I agree with something that you had brought up before. I just it <laughs> confirmed it for me. I think you made a point that you you think that when Trump is done, regardless if it's this year or or the you know four later, uh, that he's going to start a media company. I totally think so. Oh, he pretty much said that. Yeah. Like he, he I, he's setting himself up. Yes, mm-hmm. like he was. He was talking shit about. Uh, I think the New York Times and one of his last talks. And when he was doing it, he was basically saying like, "It's only a matter of time before I put you out of business." Oh, yeah. He like came out and said that. I was like, he's "Oh gonna, shit, he's uh, he's gonna have he the, is for sure setting up. the he whole was, fake news. This whole thing has been for him to set his business table up. Probably. Bro. He's like, I'm I'm gonna run for president. Fucking make a big ass loud noise about things. Point make them make the media look like evil and bad. And then I'm gonna come out with this awesome media company afterwards. Well, dude, Fox Fox News gets more viewers and attention. The, all the other mainstream news networks combined, um, and they're really the only show in, in terms of who's getting, like, in terms of getting press and stuff mainstream for the conservative side. I see him coming out with a media company that is is going to compete and maybe take away from Fox because of all the because of you know what he's done this whole time, painted the picture of the fake news and all that stuff. For sure, that's going to happen, hundred percent. He's going to get out and he's going to make billions with a new media company, and it's going to be hilarious and you know i wish people would look at it from that way you know step back a little bit look at the games and the sh- and the charades and you start to see that these people are good. they're just setting themselves up aren't oh, they? No, totally. anyway, Man. dude i uh read in a very interesting study there's a pharmaceutical company that came out this is a tr- a, a tr- it's not an approved drug but they came out with a a drug that's based off of the curcumin uh molecule so you guys know curcumin is found in uh what's it called not ginger what's the other one uh, uh, turmeric. Turmeric. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can't, I forgot for a second there. It's actually in turmeric. Curcumin is 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 is, is that's where you get it. That's where okay. you get it from. And it has. We well, you know this. Curcumin's got and turmeric has got anti-inflammatory process, I, I, properties. I thought, I thought turmeric was a root in itself. So it's it where, is. Where you, you, is but it a in, part of the root? In in one of the compound in turmeric that is largely responsible for its anti-inflammatory. Oh, it's a, it's an isolated. It's Correct. an isolated. Okay, yeah. Got curcumin's it. in in turmeric. So um, it's got all these. You know beneficial health effects that we've been reading, uh, you know, about for a long time. So, a pharmaceutical company took took curcumin, 
modified it, you know, synthesized it, modified it, and made a drug based off of curcumin, hmm. used it on mice, and reversed Alzheimer's in the mice. No, uh, reversed they did it? reversed. Now it's an animal trial. Wow. So that's uh, you know, that's that's you got to take it with a grain of salt, yeah. but. Holy shit, you know, because uh, we have yet to find anything that could do that. Have you been texting Max over this at all? No, actually, that's, that's a good question. You sh- absolutely should. Yeah, I mean, he's probably good- one of the most researched in that area that I know as far as, I mean, that was like most of what his readings are around, so he'd be a fun person to have that discussion with. Yes, yes. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to ask him and see what he thinks about it because he's so on the up and up. But that's fascinating because Alzheimer's and dementia are, I mean, that's like one of the big you know, three or four chronic illnesses that we're going to have to really so deal with. is this like addressing the inflammation in the brain on some level? Is that like a part of the Alzheimer's are fine or what? Well, I th- there's that. There's It's reducing the amyloid plaques that build up in the brain. Mm. And I haven't looked into it deep enough to know exactly how mm. it works. All I know is it's that this preliminary research came out and it's kind of making waves because and now here's the thing curcumin itself has been shown to have lots of brain health effects which is why they went and studied that molecule hmm. now yeah. not, not not to shit on your study but um <laughs> okay. what what are what's the percentage of actual uh animal studies that that translate yes it's not super good yeah, yeah. what's it's, it's, do you have a you have a number for i me? don't but it's not super good like like less than 50 or more than 50 yeah no it's gonna be less oh wow. it's gonna be less but it's the first it's the first step yeah. um and alzheimer's you know we have yet to really find anything that that we, we have drugs that we've tested on animals that slowed the progression that you know maybe stopped the progression but i don't think there's anything that's been shown in a study to reverse alzheimer's in animals so who knows where this is going to go, but right. this is kind of a first and it's pretty exciting. Very interesting. Yeah, it's a little depressing though that it's less than half. I didn't I didn't, I knew it, I knew it wasn't great, but I didn't realize it was that bad. That it's it's, like, it's much better. It's it's a first step though. You know what I'm saying? Like right. if you don't pass that first it's step. It's interesting then, nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, it's great to I think it makes for a great conversation mm-hmm. and and it's intriguing, right, to pay attention and yeah. to watch yeah, that. Yeah, cuz beforehand they had like ideas of how to prevent it, but there was never any like treatment of like mm-hmm. reversing it. So mm-hmm. that's that's exciting. So here's another brain uh, article that I read. I forgot where I read this, um, but it was about exercise and its effect on the brain. So we've known now we've now known for a while that being active isn't just good for your body; it's also very, very good for the brain. Not just physically by making your brain healthier, but they're finding uh, very consistent results that show that cognitive uh, that there's cognitive improvements. People think better; they think sharper. This, maintains IQ. This seems so obvious to it me. It does, but check this out, right? So th- that's what we know. We know exercise, good for the brain, makes you smarter, keeps your brain healthy. We know all that stuff. But now there's studies showing that some exercise is much better than others. You guys want to take a guess at what kind of exercise yeah. is, is, is For best? sure. Anything that is actually going to change or, or challenge you, um, like I would think things like stability, hand-eye coordination, things that the more uh, mentally challenging it would be would make sense that it's better for the brain, right? Versus something that, yeah. you know, like we could compound all... Compound exercises that utilize right, more yeah. muscles versus, yeah. Right. So I think the the, the more difficult it is, uh, uh, both, I think, not just physically, but then also like proprioception too. Yes, like so right. Reactive. St- yeah, reactive, stability, things like that that are going to throw you off. Those type of movements, I think, would probably exercise and train the brain the most. Uh, in comparison, you to- guys are 100 percent right. So what they found in the studies that were that cognitively challenging exercises were far more effective than exercise that was not cognitively challenging. So here's a good example of of, of what would fall under each of those categories, right? Exercises that are not challenging cognitively would be walking, uh, would be riding a stationary bike, repetitive mm-hmm. motion where you get lost in your thought and yeah. you're just moving over. Now that's not to say that they're not good. Right. They have tremendous health benefits for the brain, right? But exercises that require thinking and concentration and focus. And problem solving. Like resistance training. Mm-hmm. Resistance training, because of the complexity of the movements, because there's such a wide variety of things that you can do, and because resistance training is always, if you do it right, resistance training should always change. Like if you're a runner or a cyclist, only thing that changes is you go farther or go harder. Mm-hmm. With resistance training, exercises change. Movement changes as you get better. Things are constantly challenging. Resistance training is in that category, and although the study fell short, or excuse me, the article fell short of saying resistance training is the best, they kind of laid out the parameters, and I think we're 
five to ten years away from scientists saying the best form of exercise for your brain is resistance training. Now, is someone sharing this with you, or is this something because you're researching for your book, you're coming across stuff like this? No, no, no. This is I belong to a lot of groups on uh, on Facebook. Sounds so funny when you say that. What, what do you mean? <laughs> Why? I belong to a lot of groups. Yeah, like, like, like I'm a dork. Well, yeah, like, like, you know, like the, the high school kid that yeah. belonged to all the fucking She's after like chess club. And yeah, exactly. My, yeah, uh, the chess yeah. club. Dude. My, <laughs> community my service. crochet yeah. uh, hey, weekends. This yeah. is a, this is a, this yeah. is a hack. I'm telling you right now, this is a hack. You know, I get asked all the time, and we see in the in the in the uh, under the Qua meme all the time. Well, people are like, "Where does Sal get his studies? Where does he do his research?" Here's the best place. Okay, go on Facebook and find groups in cat. You know, groups in, in categories that you're interested in. So, if you're mm -hmm. interested in economics, type in economics and and follow a bunch of groups. If you're interested in neuroscience or nutrition or resistance training. Follow these groups. And then what ends up happening, some of them have to approve you. Some of them just let anybody join. But once you're in, people in those groups are fanatical. And they'll post articles and studies as soon as they pop up. Right. And some of them are yeah. obscure. But here's why it's 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 amazing. You it's need to not, watch the debates that people that's have. That's it. Right. Yeah. Then in the comments, I go in the comments. And if I so I, I, there's this one neuroscience uh, group that I belong to. So they'll post an article on some new drug or you know new breakthrough in, in neuroscience. I'll read the article uh, and I'll understand some of it, but I'm not a neuroscientist. So I'm like, okay, well, I, that kind of is interesting. Then I'll go in the con comments and you have a bunch of neuroscience fanatics and nerds discussing it. And then you learn everything yeah. through the no, discussion. That's, that's smart. The best. And it, it's funny because I just go through my Facebook feed and I just scroll through and there's an article, there's a study. There's yeah. a, and I click on the comments and I read and it's, it's a total hack, yeah. total hack. It's very, very effective. That is cool. Anyway, along those lines, uh, another study. Um, came out um, that tested the effectiveness or the impact of exercise priority. So these groups went in and trained full body. Some of them started with leg exercise. Some of them started with a chest exercise. Oh, we were talking about this. We did. We talked about it on an old episode. The study showed that most of the strength gains were go to the first exercises in the workout. Mm -hmm. So and it's funny; it's an old bodybuilding principle, right? You know, right. prioritize you know what you want to work on. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who do full body workouts, for most of you, we recommend starting with the big muscle groups, just most bang for your buck. But if you've been training for a while and there's a specific thing you want to focus on, start your workout with that and then move into the rest of the exercises because that'll be a, it's kind of a hack to get that for sure. Yeah. Our first question is from Fit Allen. How do I get rid of that bottom belly pooch because it is really annoying? This was a common uh, complaint or request I would get from clients uh, back in the day. Very common. Especially women. Pooch. Yeah, it, and I'm going to assume this is a woman just from the verbiage. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I don't know many dudes that say my pooch. Yeah, bottom belly yeah. pooch. Um, so, okay, a couple things. One, if, you're store, if it's body fat that you're referring to, you got to get leaner. If you're talking about having excess body fat in the lower abdominal region, um, you just got to get leaner. And if that's a place you tend to store body fat, it's going to take longer. Last place to go. To get rid of it, which means you just got to keep uh, getting leaner. So it may be a stubborn area for you because you're predisposed to store there. Now, there are some studies that suggest, and this is far from conclusive, but some studies suggest that if you're a high-stress individual – um, for women in particular, you're more likely to store body fat in the midsection. Um, so hormones and stress can kind of change a little bit, according mm -hmm. to some of these studies, mm -hmm. on how you store body fat. Again, they're not conclusive. My uh, opinion is that's probably, unless it's extreme, that's probably a minor effect. I think it's largely determined by genetics. Now, if it's not body fat, um, and that can be frustrating. If you're lean, I've had clients like this, where they're lean, and they're, they don't have a lot of body fat in their stomach, but the lower abdominal region kind of this was me when sticks I sticks out a little I told bit you it blew mm -hmm. my mind yeah and so here's what you need to consider first and foremost we're standing gravity's pushing things down there are organs in your abdominal cavity and they're going to push out the lower abs or lower abdominal area more than the upper just because of of, of gravity so that's number one number two the mu there are muscles in your core that actually are responsible for keeping things tight and one in particular is the TVA, the transverse abdominus. If you train just your abs and your obliques and you train your core all the time, but you don't do specific TVA exercises, especially after having a child, mm -hmm. because when you have a child, the TVA stretches and atrophies. It has to. It's making room for the baby. It can't keep everything in tight. 
after you have the baby, that muscle will remain disconnected and not strong, and you could it could leave you with where your internal organs push out a little more than they did before because you didn't strengthen those those muscles. Uh, and actually, we actually did a video, so we'll, we'll put it. We'll make sure it's in the show notes. Did we do a video on this? We did a stomach mm, vacuum video. Vacuum. It's actually oh, that's actually right. yeah. one of our more popular videos. That's right. Um, where I demonstrate an exercise that that targets the TVA. It's not a it's not going to be effective forever, but if your your pooch is due to a weak TVA, especially if after having a kid, it's an excellent exercise to practice. And I would say do that, you know, five minutes every day or every other day, and you should notice some. Oh, some I would say effects. that's. I think that's one and two. One is uh, is just absolutely dieting to where you can lose the body fat, and I I can definitely um, I, I I can totally understand where this person is coming from because I when I competed. The first show that I got ready for, I remember being down, uh, you know, four or five percent body fat, and I still had this. I mean, I was lean, shredded everywhere, but then I had this little tiny pooch that was left over still there, and it was really weird to me that that had happened. And it took three cycles of me leaning out as as lean as I could possibly get, getting down to that single digit body fat, going back to training, adding calories, building more, building more muscle then cutting again and and it took three full cycles like that of mm. shredding as lean as I've ever been in my life to building going back to building for a few months then shredding to as lean as I possibly could and then the third time was when it finally mm-hmm. was eliminated so it could be a very stubborn area and you could and if it's like the first time you got all the way down to the lowest body fat percentage there, especially if you were carrying that body fat there for most of your life for a very long time, and you're now the leanest you've ever been, but yet it's still there. Um, my advice is to then reverse diet and go the other direction to you know, focus on building muscle and adding calories back into the diet for a while, and then come right back down. And don't let yourself, and the, the goal in this case is, and I think this is where it's probably hard for a lot of people is the, the consistency factor, right? So if you go back and you fall off the wagon again, you're just going to end up adding it to that stubborn place again. And you're just in the same, Mm -hmm. you're on a hamster wheel, just doing the same thing over. So you've got to get to the point where you lean down as much as you've, you've ever been, then reverse out. So you're adding calories back in, but you're doing it methodically and you're trying to build muscle and, and, and use that to your advantage to help speed your metabolism up and then come back down again to, to shred that off. I had to get down to, I don't know what I got down to. What, what would you say my body fat was in, in my pictures, my MAPS anabolic photos? I, oh, I, you're you're between three and five. Yeah, so I, I, I got really shredded, and it took me to get that lean for that totally to go away. And I remember when it first yeah. happened, I was laying down in bed, and it was hot summer, so I had my shirt off, and I looked down, and I see that there's no more of that extra body fat on my belly button. I had to get super shredded to get there. Yeah. Now. I Here's, had a dream about that. <laughs> Look, that you were shredded? No. Or that I was shredded? So that you could see your winky. <laughs> no, what you just described. <laughs> that was, yeah, anyways. Yeah, no, <laughs> That was a, bad, a joke that went wrong. <laughs> we, should let, yeah. we should let Justin just, yeah. hey, well, you're, well, you're fat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for turning that around. On <laughs> I appreciate that. I was trying to say I was like fantasizing about that. No, no, and I'm then a, you ruined yeah, it. Yeah, no, I was, no, I remember looking down and seeing that it was finally gone. But here's the, here's the, the thing to take away from that it's not necessarily to get super shredded because i did get super shredded it was an unhealthy lean i I, I honestly if because i was doing photos and i knew that i had to look a certain way to get any attention to sell maps anabolic this was of course before mind pump i got myself to an unhealthy body fat percentage and in real life had you met me i wouldn't have looked impressive i actually looked a little i looked gaunt um i mean if i took my shirt off and you looked at my abs you'd be like wow but i wasn't healthy so if you get lean and you know if you're a woman and you're like down to like 15% body fat and you're like I still got this lower ab push but it's, oh, you're fine. You're okay. Like getting any leaner, yeah, you might get rid of it. Uh, but you're going to be compromising your health and your metabolism and it's funny because when I came out of that that shredded state, I remember um I I came out of it, I did everything wrong. I I binged or whatever. I got sick for like you know th- two or three days. Um, gained body fat. My metabolism was much slower. I remember I was like, wow, I, I'm gaining body fat on way less calories than before. And it took me a little while to get myself back to uh, to normal. But you know, here's the other side, of course, is the exercise. Now, I talked about the vacuum exercise, great exercise. Here's the other thing you can do. When you work your abs, 
You can also change your exercises so that you do focus on activating the TVA. And this is how you do it. Let's say you're doing a crunch. Rather than doing your crunch slowly, coming up and squeezing the abs, which is still fine, it's great form, as you're coming up, simultaneously suck your belly button down to your spine. So while you're coming up and squeezing, also suck in your stomach like you're trying to get your belly button all the way down to your spine. And what you'll find is, A, you're not going to be able to do nearly as many reps. It's very, very difficult. Um, and B, you're going to be activating your TVA so it's going to feel very different. And what that does is it simultaneously works the abs but also starts to teach the, the TVA how to activate. But if, this is, if you're post-pregnancy – uh, just doing a standing vacuum is going to be hard because you've completely lost connection to that muscle. Yeah, a lot of my clients, I, I think that was a very common thing of just posture, you know, mm -hmm. like where, uh, you know, the, it looked like their stomach was a bit more distended than, mm -hmm. you know, normally if they had, you know, proper uh, bracing techniques and they were like applying that and connected to the TVA, like it really does make a big difference in terms of like even just sitting down and standing up like what you present. Next question is from Tyler Rowe. Can men and women follow the same strength and muscle building programs or should different approaches be taken? Can they? They should. Yeah. This is what pro one of the worst things the fitness space ever did. I know. Ever was convince women that they need to train differently from men. The only good thing about CrossFit. Yeah, what it, it exactly. Yeah. They did such a good job of that, right? Yeah, yeah. That actually we, we've got, been giving them way too much praise lately. Yeah. I, I can't stand it. <laughs> but it's 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 so true. It's one of the worst things that they could, that they now. Why did they do it? It's an effective marketing approach. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Early days of resistance training and gyms. No, no woman ever showed up to the gym and said, "Hey, I want to look like my husband." Yeah. No. You know that no. doesn't happen. <laughs> no. so. Or some do, but it's true. very few. Right. It's uh, you know back when resistance training became a thing and gyms had weights. Uh, it was mostly men that were lifting weights. It was most and the gyms in the fitness space said, how are we going to attract women? And at the time, the spokespeople for resistance training were bodybuilders. Remember, Arnold Schwarzenegger and the documentary Pumping Iron went mainstream. It went mainstream. It was the first time the American public at large was exposed to bodybuilders and lifting weights. And so it got tied to Arnold. So it's like lift weights, look like a bodybuilder. Men were doing it. Women were like, I am not touching weights with a 10-foot pole. I don't want to look like that. So the fitness industry responded by saying, oh, no, this is how you should lift weights. Mm -hmm. High reps, don't use free weights, use machines, feel the burn, small movements, don't use weights at all. I mean, the, one of the first gyms that I ever worked in, in 19, back in 1997, had a, uh, a women's area. So it was, a, it was, like, yeah. a, it was okay. like a general weight area with machines and weights. So disrespectful. People forget it's about it. It's all purple yeah. and pink. I Bro, know. <laughs> you know what's funny? I remember Tiny, I went know. in there, and first of all, the women's area, no free weights. Uh, actually, no, there were a few free weights. There were the the, 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 the pink, yeah. small dumbbells. Rubber-coated dumbbells. Didn't go above 10 pounds. Yeah. And the machines were the same as the machines out in the other floor, except the upholstery on them was purple or pink. Yeah, that was the difference, and they and they had pictures <laughs> instead of pictures of like a, a a male anatomy you know chart or whatever. It had pictures of a female anatomy chart, and then the female one was posed kind of like all sexy. Yeah, yeah, and I remember yeah. walking in there being <laughs> like, "This is hilarious," you know. And I wasn't allowed in there because I was a guy. That's it's a so hot stu man. So stupid. Yeah. No, it's so dumb. Uh, the 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 rules that make resistance training effective apply to both men and women. Now, there's differences in the individual. That's the differences you want to look at, not because you're a woman or a man, but because you're an individual. So you may want to work on different things. You may have a different level of experience. Fit, you know, you may want to train at a certain intensity versus a different intensity. But no, don't go to the gym thinking, I'm a woman, therefore I should train this way, or I'm a man, before, therefore, no, stupid. Everybody should work out with weights uh, generally the same in terms of effectiveness. Next question is from Danae Jor. What's your guy's opinion on the food is medicine notion? I love that. Yeah. yeah. Who is that? one of the first people to say that, Doug? Is that um, Hippocrates? Hippocrates. Those yeah. Hippocrates. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's funny because people don't truly think, you know, what you are, you are what you eat. You know that, that saying? It's true. Mm -hmm. What you eat goes in your body, goes in your, obviously your mouth, and then your body assimilates it and it becomes a part of your body. I can't think of a, a more clear, easy way of understanding that your food completely affects uh, your health, 100%. And how you eat is probably 
it's it's got to be one of the top three things that'll affect your overall health. I can't think of too many things that that is above that. Well, I mean, I feel like it's so obvious too. It's uh, we we have all these different uh, macro and micronutrients that. Uh, do specific things in the body and and make it run efficiently. And yes, we are incredibly resilient that if we don't have some of these things, we don't die the next day. We can get by. Just like if you don't change your oil in your car for you know a long period of time, it doesn't just die out of nowhere because all of a sudden the oil ran dry. It'll keep running for a while, just not very effectively. And I, I feel the body is very similar. Like if we you know, lack nutrients and we don't feed the body what it needs, it doesn't, we don't die the next day, but it starts to run less optimally and, and, and less and less and less. And then that makes you uh, susceptible for disease and other things because you're not feeding it the way you should. So I think uh, absolutely, I like that notion. And I think that uh, more people should look at it like that. I think right now, a majority of the population, we look at uh, eating is like a pleasure thing because we're there, and right? We're, we we live in a time now where nobody is, you know, worried about dying from starvation. And, and you so can be so choosy, right? Yeah, it's, it's all about pleasure. Oh, I don't feel like that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I want that. This sounds better. You know, mm -hmm. and we sit here and we go back and forth and argue over what we're going to well, have delivered. Well, it's such a convenience now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, that's the thing. It's like, we, we just have so much of it now that we've, I think we've lost track of the fact that like, you know what we're actually consuming in our body. That's the build. That's the raw materials. That's the building blocks for all the cells in your body. It's like, of course, you know that's that's part of you. So you know, in terms of like looking for quality, I've always thought that, uh, yeah, that's that's the way we should go. And and you know, it is going to affect you, and it, and your body is going to be made up of you know what you put in it. So why not uh, try to your best, you know, to always kind of uh, look for for adding in the best stuff. And, and training training this. Was was like one of the things I really enjoyed about uh, training and bodybuilding, right? Like, because I had to measure and track and, and, and pay really closer attention than I ever have in my entire life. It really gives you an idea of like, wow, how powerful, uh, you know, eating certain foods are and how it can affect the body. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really does highlight that when you can manipulate your fiber in just the slightest bit. And when you are so detailed like that, it's like instantly I, I, I notice a difference in my stool. Mm -hmm. Or if I sh inject an extra 100 grams of carbohydrates that day, like holy crap, all of a sudden my workout, it feels like it's 10 times better. And mm -hmm. you know when you're really dialed in like that, you can really start to tell the difference of all these micro and macronutrients that you're either giving to the body or taking away from the body. And I think that just highlights like how powerful that really is. And I just think that for the most part, most people are over consuming so much stuff that you're kind of numb to how much food can be medicine to our body. We don't value it because it's everywhere. It's, we were yeah. When we were in Arizona, Adam, I took a, a Uber um, uh, when we were going to the dinner or whatever, when I came and picked you up. Mm -hmm. And the driver was, uh, he was obviously foreign. And I love it when, when I meet somebody, um, you know, if, especially an Uber driver when they're foreign, I like to ask them where they're from and what brought you here and all this other stuff. Anyway, the man was Ethiopian and he came here, he was older. He came here in the late 80s as a, a refugee. So he's actually part of a refugee program that brought him over. Anyway, he has five kids and, you know, he's talking about his kids going to college, this nice. and that. So then I asked him, I said, you know, because I'm the product of immigrants, I said, what uh, what shocked you the most or surprised you the most about America? And he goes, you guys have so much food that you throw food away. Because uh -huh. I couldn't believe how people, it was like, we have so much, we just throw it away. Because I, it, it took me so long to get used to the fact that you guys are so, have so much. And that's just the position in the state that we're in. Now, as far as food as medicine is concerned, Look, there's, there's, here, I'll give you a very specific example. If you, and we identified this a long time ago, for certain, for certain types of epilepsy, you could change your diet and stop having seizures for certain types. You can go on a ketogenic diet, and we've been treating epilepsy this way way before we had drugs. Change your diet. Wow, look, the kid doesn't have uh, seizures anymore. Yeah. Um, I've had clients, female clients, who didn't, weren't getting their period and had hormone imbalances wow. and, by working with their nutritionist, right. they bump their protein, bump their fat. All of a sudden, they freaking boom, fix, and yeah. they conceive. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I know that food. There's studies that show that food can eating a certain way can reduce your your susceptibility to viruses or bacterial infection. Um, uh, I, look at your digestion. If you have poor digestion, does that affect the rest of your body? Absolutely. Does changing your nutrition potentially improve your digestion? Yes, it does. So there are both acute effects 
from food where it's almost like Western medicine, like taking a pill. And then, of course, there's long stream, uh, downstream effects. So the, 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 the best medicine is food. That's the, yeah. the best medicine is general. And you do it every single day. You put it in your mouth and eat it every single well, day. Well, and I think, too, like why we've gone away from it is because it's interesting because we just consume food, but we don't pay attention to how we react afterwards as well. Like we've, we've talked to this, uh, about this ad nauseum, like where, you know, I will eat something, be affected by it. Won't trace back that, you know, the food had anything to do with that. Uh, meanwhile, if we're taking medicine, like in concentrated form, like we're expecting to feel something. Mm -hmm. That's all we're focused on. Yes. Don't, don't you guys really think this has a lot to do with it because we overconsume so much that, that we get away with a lot of bullshit? Like if we lived in a, in a time where like food was really scarce. Oh, we would and, value it totally and, differently. And, and we, and like you, it was like you needed the calories every time you ate because you were all, most oh, of the of time course. you yeah, were yeah. depleted. And then if you were also making poor choices nutritionally like your body would let you know right away like if you only could get to 1500 yeah, glaring at that yeah point. 1500 calories and back then right is that's all you could ever get to and then you made the choice of it's always lemon heads you know if so, your body would fucking let you know really quick mm -hmm. that that's not nourishing the body at all but because we have so much shit and it's all fortified with different things and you're getting at least you're getting some fuel in there we, oh, we're fine. We're okay. And we I'm medicate not... ourselves with, right. with drugs and, you know, uh, medicines and ibuprofen and alcohol. And yeah. then we start to believe that the, our condition is just a part of who we are. You know, I, 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 oh, I'm just have insomnia. I just have poor yeah. sleep all the time. Or, yeah, I, I always take a laxative because I just have bad digestion. Or I always have heartburn, you know, so I have to pop Rolaids all the time or whatever. Not realizing that your food... It can fix you. Right. You know, uh, sailors in the past would use, you know, lemons and oranges to, to cure scurvy, scurvy which, yeah. which uh, you know, was a disease. So absolutely 100% it is uh, food is medicine. Um, and we should definitely, you know, it's funny. When you look at uh, modern hunter-gatherers, so, you know, how, what percentage of Americans would you say eat organ meats? Oh, oh my I God. would say less than 1%. Yeah, nobody eats organ meats, right? Yeah. Nobody eats liver. You know, back in the day, they used to... Moms were were encouraged. That was the, that was the first unless thing you, you ate, count wasn't it? hot dogs. Is, wasn't is, that like uh, the most prized stuff? For the, isn't that what you would go after first? Well, it, it, 60, 70 years ago, moms were were encouraged by their doctor. Hey, make liver for your kid. Yeah, you know, or here, give them cod liver oil. You ever watch the cartoons where the mom is feeding the kid something in a spoon? The kid's like gagging or whatever. That's cod liver oil. Yeah, and they knew that because back then kids had you know, vitamin D deficiency. It showed up as certain diseases like rickets. Rickets, yeah. And they didn't have synthesized vitamin D. They would give them. Cod liver oil as a you know as a way to 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 solve it. Now, as far as hunter gatherers are concerned, you when they make a hunt, if you are visiting with the tribe and they kill an animal, they offer the heart or the liver or the kidneys at, at, to you first, right? Because it's the prized yeah, liver piece of is meat. most mineral dense. It's right? super super nutrient dense. But we're just we just have so much of it that we just we don't even, like they like that driver said we just throw it away. <laughs> yeah. Next question is from Force Fitness Kyle. I'm a new parent and also a trainer. Do you have any advice on how to balance being a husband, father, and trainer while keeping my own fitness up? Mm. You know, um, use fitness as a tool, and, and that tool can be wielded in many, many different ways. Um, use the force, Kyle. You, <laughs> he's, you're still in that space. Uh, it, it, it's in his name. Yeah. yeah you know, years ago, um, I went through a very, very difficult time. Somebody very close to me was uh, diagnosed with a, you know, a, a, a disease that was going to take their life. And my whole family was affected very, very terribly. And I didn't stop exercising. Now it's not because I'm a fitness fanatic and zealot and I'm not going to miss my workouts for anything type of deal. No, no, no. That's not what it was. I changed my workouts. I didn't work out as often, but I stopped training to get stronger, build muscle and burn body fat. I, I started training to keep myself healthy enough mm -hmm to help my family during this difficult time. Mm -hmm. So really it was changing the focus. Fitness is an amazing tool. So if you're Becomes super therapy. Yeah, if you're super busy, exercise can be an incredible stress relief, make you fit and healthy so you can handle more stress. Modify it. It becomes a different tool. It's a tool that can be modified uh, to your lifestyle. I, I think this is a really good question because I, I do um I do know it's challenging as a trainer, right? Because you you are your own billboard, right? So there's a there's a part of you that you know, feels like shit. I can't. I can't just look kind of healthy. Yeah. I need to look a certain way to attract clients, and it's part of my brand. And so, I, I, I can understand how how that can be a little bit more challenging because 
personally, I, I just my fitness has changed right now, uh, and it's right in line with what you just said, Saul. Is you know I'm less worried about PRs. I'm less worried about what my abs or my arm, my biceps look like. And it's more like about getting movement and staying mobile and making sure that I don't get chronic pain and getting my steps in and, you know, and, you know, talking about father, husband, uh, and fitness all wrapped into one. Like I do things now and, I, and I'm, I'm very conscious of, of making this choice is, you know, hey, I won't just go work out sometimes for an hour, but I'll make sure, hey, I'll strap the baby on my chest. I'll grab Katrina and we'll go for a walk yeah. for an hour, hour and a half. That's so he falls asleep. I get one on one time with her. Yeah. I'm getting a bunch of steps in, so I'm burning calories. Like, so I do a lot more stuff like that now, and I and I feel really good about it. Yeah, uh, it's not making my physique look impressive by doing that, but it keeps me healthy. It helps me work on my relationship with my partner. It gives me quality time with my son. I feel like I kind of knock out all those things that are what you just listed that are extremely important. You just got to shift your goals a little bit this time and be okay with that. And right now, uh, I'm really happy if I get in the gym three days a week. If I get three good lifts in a week, um, that's solid for me. That's enough that I know that I'm not going to like completely spiral out of control or regress way back or put on a ton of body fat. That keeps me in a, in a relatively comfortable body fat percentage, keeps me relatively strong and a physique that looks like I work out. I just don't look impressive right now. But more importantly, uh, my, the, the higher priority things, my time with my son, my time with Katrina, those things are, are, are way more important to me right now. And so I prioritize them first and find ways to fit fitness into that. Yeah. I think that's great advice. I think that's that, that was the, the direction. I can't even speak. The direction <laughs> I was going to go, uh, being more inclusive and like like having you know your partner and and uh, you know ways that you can incorporate uh, the family involved in movement and and being able to exercise and you know for me like obviously we we've talked about having a home gym and like <clears throat> that wasn't as you know appealing for me like when I was just like focused on myself and then you know you know my own self improvement but that was a game changer for, you know, being able to have access to that. And then also like building the environment around me outside, having things available to then go climb on, do pull-ups, do whatever. It's just like, you gotta, you have less moments, less long moments to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll have short moments to yourself you just figure out how to maximize those moments and also include people in your process. Yeah. It, you know, fitness, long-term fitness success is based on the following. Use it to improve and supplement the quality of your life. That's it. It's not supposed to replace life. So if you have your mindset stuck on the, I work out six days a week, I'm shredded, I'm going to always maximize my performance, I'm going to have this six-pack abs, I'm going to look super buffed, and then you become a father and a husband and you have a business or you're working and you think, no, I'm not doing all those things because I need to, I'm obsessed over... You, fitness now is going to be detrimental to your health. Instead, look at it and say to yourself, how can fitness supplement and improve or contribute to the quality of the most important things of my life? And so that means that your fitness routine is going to look different. That's all. It's mm -hmm. just going to look different. Sometimes you're going to work out five days a week. Sometimes you're going to work out two or three days a week. Sometimes your lifts are going to be heavy and hard, and sometimes they're going to be more mobile mobility focused and full range of motion and you know just trying to feel good and maintain your health that's all and if you do that cuz here's the deal life changes life is going look 100% if you think life's going to stay the same you're in for a rude awakening it's going to change so allow your fitness to change along with your life and you will develop a lifelong healthy relationship with fitness and you'll find that you'll never get into those you know situations where i stopped fitness for six months because I can't do it the way I want to. Uh, that's when it becomes a problem. And with that, I want to remind everybody, look, there's only five days left for the 50% off MAPS Aesthetic Sale. This is one of our most popular workout programs. It is a body sculpting, body building, and bikini-inspired workout program. It's half off. You only have five days left. So do this right now. Go to mapsblack.com and use the code BLACK50. B-L-A-C-K-5-0. There's no space there. Use that for the discount.